Good morning. Thank you for inviting me here today. The person who's speaking to you now, my, I have not, o- not only been a journalist for 22, the last 15, to editorial journalism as an interviewer and as a participant in Radio Caracas uh, television, which was the oldest uh, channel and a leader in Venezuela. We were closed the f- down the first time in 2007, and I will give you more information about this. I am also a suspect in Venezuela uh, con- for conspiring against Vene- Venezuelan democracy. I am a suspect f- for uh, attempting, uh, making, attacking in- the institution and inciting military rebellion and instigating the public uh, to uh, rise up. And all these accusations co- relate to my work as a journalist made by a minister of uh, M- uh, Mr. Chavez. And they were brought to the prosecutor who has initiated an investigation that could lead to a sentence of up to 30 years of deprivation of uh, liberty. And this investigation, I suppose, because the government hasn't done anything and the le- le- the judiciary hasn't said anything, has been paralyzed because it was a surprise in the government. I participated last September and October of the discussion on immunity of parliamentarians. This began in December and concerning the government discourse, the the situation has not been resolved, but I am one of 10,000 cases of workers in the communication field in Venezuela who have become victims, uh, who have lost their jobs. Hundreds of them have been persecuted uh, by the courts or persecuted in other ways by the regime led by Hugo Chavez. And there have been six channels of television that have been closed to date. 32 radio uh, stations have been closed, and 200 others have been threatened. Dozens of forms of written media have been closed, and people have been attacked physically, and more, including more than a thousand people working in the communications area in Venezuela. Five people have been murdered. And these should be clarified normally and to find out if there was a link between the government of Hugo Chavez and uh, with independent press in our country. As you all know, the president of Venezuela claims that in Latin America he is creating a new bloc of communist countries under the auspices of the Castro brothers in Cuba. They have very strong ties of an ideological, economic, and military nature with Nicaragua, for example, Bolivia, Ecuador, a number of countries in the Caribbean. And, of course, uh, Chavez is a friend of Gaddafi and others. As he was the president of the former president of Iraq. And he is a friend of the president of Iran and of Belarus. And he is a partner of all these people as well. Now, I'm mentioning this circle of friendships and links, uh, financial and commercial military links, because this has impacted on the country. That means that Venezuela has, since 99, since Hugo Chavez has been in power, 
It has had a great deal of wealth because of its oil, but the government has manipulated more than a billion dollars. But we have the most chaotic production in all of Latin America. We have a level of inflation that is the highest and the most serious of all of the Americas and one of the worst in the world. We have a situation of, of a lack of security for citizens. This has led to 150,000 murders over the past 12 years. And all of this is related to the government, we believe, has given priority to its own international ideological uh, project and has abandoned the, in the domestic interests of the country. And to the extent that may, the media have been transmitting, disseminating the truth and denouncing cases of corruption, denouncing the handing over of our sovereignty to, to totalitarian and communist interest, the persecution has been growing and more implacable over time. And as I mentioned, because uh, of the small uh, group that I created in the parliament, which is very hard to was very hard to do in Venezuela today. I am being persecuted. In Venezuela, we have a number of communicators who, such as myself, uh, who have had to leave the country in exile. And I am being investigated today. And there are cases of journalists who have been accused of murders within the country, of corruption within the country. And no proof other than the words, the President's own word, to back these accusations. And if I were still in Venezuela, I might be facing a 30 years, a 30 years prison sentence. And this is the case of these other people as well, as I said. Now, uh, Beyond the physical attacks and the aggression on communicators and legal prosecution, which we've seen for Reporters Without Borders and, and Human Rights Watch, groups like that, we have heard of cases before the ICC and the Inter-American Court of Human Rights Despite these cases, Hugo Chavez's government continues along the path of substituting freedom of expression, including human rights of citizens and the right to have access to different free forms of information and the human rights of citizens to use independent medium media to express themselves to to announce or to come up with new forms of management in Venezuela. And over the recent past, over the past two years, and to be precise, the President of the Republic warned the people against electronic communication and social networks, saying, they had become very powerful enemies. And for a number of years now, in Venezuela, under Chavez's auspices, laws have been enacted threatening and punishing the free use of the press. And if one of the notorious lay in 2004 called uh, the Law of Social Responsibility in Radio and Television, M meant that all of us working in these fields are in a kind of firing squad. Any 
misstep, any, a, any problem that we create, any m lack of ease that we create because of our comments can lead us to be brought before a committee. And a case can be brought against us. And we can be accused of being uh, attacking the mental health of the people of Venezuela that we are attacking the security of the country political s stability of the country and immediately the means of communication and the journalists can be punished with financial and p criminal sanctions and this depends on the discretion of the government. It is up to them to decide. And this was used for Radio Caracas Television, where I worked for 15 years. The first close was in 2007, as I told you before. President Chavez cried out that there would be no more concessions made to this uh, uh, channel who, that was trying to uh, incite a coup to carry out rebellion, to create a coup d'etat. And there were no investigations or uh, judgments or sentences or rulings. And we were just called rebels. Uh, all there was was the word of the president. He and this led to the closure in 2007 of Radio Caracas, and this affected 3,000 uh, employees. In 2010, since Radio Caracas had been, uh, was uh, using satellite transmission and cable, the government invented something new to evaluate the programs to see if it was fulfilling standards that it had just come up with on for all channels. So this channel would have to hand over 30% of its time and devote it to government uh, propaganda for free. They would have to do it, but they would have to also, and I don't know if you can understand this, the presidential chains. This is an expression in Spanish. What are they? They are prerogatives of the government that the president gives himself so that all means of communications and TV channels, ra radio stations must transmit his messages and uh, they have to account for their uh, programmation So imagine that there's a man who speaks for speaks for t four months in a row, speaking for 24 hours a day. And this has been broken down and detailed. Now, we did not allow this to happen to us. We refused. So the minister said, with well, this new means, we are saving Venezuela from a, 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 of a madman who is drinking poison every day and who is poisoning and making our population sick. And this communications law of social responsibility regarding the television over the last few months were reformulated to attack internet communication and to trace the social network operators. There's one, there's a sole point of access at the very moment that a submarine line cable is being laid 
to concentrate relations between uh, to set up relations between uh, Cuba and Venezuela and this access point exists in other countries but in the case of, of Venezuela there are many reasons for us to believe that there is an intention to exercise political control and the laws were reformed and imagine how mad this is to establish timetables for accents uh, in intern internet whether they to divide them up by age group children young people adults and information will be disseminated and a new rule has been set up where all business can be lost if the government does not approve and there would be, there were there have been a number of pages that are be, that have been brought to trial based on uh, their accusation that are and because the president is a, is paranoid and he thinks that people are trying to kill him every day the people who are operating in these social networks who are using these information in internet services if they don't follow to the line they will have to pay for three generations uh, they'll need the time because the fines are so enormous so I'm telling you this so that you can understand the indirect impact this has had which is self-censure that has come into being that shows that this is a communist re regime and is that it is substituting information with propaganda with government propaganda including incitement to hate and uh, violence both physical and legal violence against the independent press and most radio stations and television channels and many many journalists and many means electronic means of communication have decided either to uh, cave in and give favorable information for the government or transmit something else and not political information so you see that democracy is deteriorating and that we are fighting to reestablish democracy but we're trying to speak many formal uh, international uh, fora so that people can hear about this and we thank you very much for having invited us here today to share this information with you Je vous remercie pour cette intervention. I'd like to thank you. Thank you. You made it that you as a member of the parliament were able to have enjoy a certain immunity. What well, does that gives you some room for maneuver to have influence in the government about future change? I think that everything depends on whether there will be more elections and if we can change the executive power because the president is moving forward. Now there is a pluralistic parliament. They have fewer votes, but they have more deputies, more representatives and in the few the little power that the demo, democratic uh, representatives have well we can't go abroad we're very limited